Joining us now to give us uh, an update on what is happening with uh, the indictment of former President Donald Trump, Lawrence Wilson, national politics reporter with Epoch Times. Lawrence, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. So give us a rundown of what took place this afternoon and how significant it was. Well, for the first time in our nation's history, a a former president was indicted on federal charges. Uh, This is not the first indictment for Trump, but those New York state charges are one thing. These are federal charges. That's something else. Uh, These are the laws that he was sworn to uphold, and it it gives a, a greater seriousness to this indictment very historic moment. He was arraigned at about 3 p.m. today at the, excuse me, federal courthouse in Miami. 37 charges related to the handling of federal documents, including supposedly, excuse me, quite a number of uh, secret, top secret uh, documents having to do uh, with our nation's defense. And The president uh, pleaded, former President Trump pleaded not guilty to all charges. He uh, remained mostly silent during the uh, arraignment, speaking only occasionally uh, with his attorneys. And uh, then he was released on his own recognizance and uh, is expected to speak tonight at his uh, golf club in Bedminster, uh, New Jersey. So... Let's. Uh, we're going to look later at the legal implications here and the substance and, and whether or not this is just more of the same. And this uh, this president, you know, constantly being alleged to have done something, and so far nothing has uh, has stuck to him. Let's talk political. What implications does this have for the 2024 presidential election cycle? Well, there's two ways to look at that. Um, in a legal sense. No implication whatsoever. Uh, There is no law requiring that the president of the United States uh, not have been indicted uh, on federal charges, not have been convicted, or not even that he not be in jail. So uh, this does not stop the Trump campaign. In fact, many observers believe that it's giving it uh, energy because, of course, it catapults uh, Trump to the top of the news cycle from now till who knows when. And it has really enlivened his base. It's also kind of rallied the support of some Republican leaders who had seemed to be saying, you know, we maybe the Trump era is over, had been open to the idea of considering other candidates. But now, of course, there are uh, many of them, including, uh, for example, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Uh, attacking the DOJ uh, for this indictment, attacking the Biden administration for this. So it has galvanized some Republican leaders. In fact, uh, most of the presidential candidates for president on the Republican side have taken the same tack. Um, The the Governor DeSantis uh, has decried this as a a political uh, indictment. Uh, vowed that if elected, he would uh, uh, clean house at the DOJ. Uh, Nikki Haley, former governor of South Carolina, has said much the same. Only two of the candidates have actually used this as an occasion to attack Trump himself, and those are uh, former Governor Chris Christie and former Governor Asa, Asa Hutchinson. Uh, the rest have kind of said, well, uh, politically motivated prosecution is a bad thing, while everybody... Um, should follow the law, this indictment should not have been brought. So it's it's really kind of cast an interesting dynamic into the Republican primaries as even some of Trump's opponents mm-hmm. are supporting him, at least uh, opposing his uh, indictment. Yeah, it, it is going to be very interesting how this works out. Uh, Lawrence, thanks so much for taking uh, time to uh, to join us. My pleasure. Thank you.